So we're in the middle of a sermon series talking about God's glory. And here's the big idea. God is bigger than you think he is. He's more powerful. God is more trustworthy. His ways are higher. His plans are better than you think they are. But if you could start to see it, you would not just learn to love God more, but you would be able to go through life trusting him. In fact, seeing God's glory now gives you a foundation to live fearlessly into the future for whatever God has in your life. And what we're talking about today is so important because too many of us have missed out on seeing how big God is, and instead we have settled for solutions that fall far short of what God has for us. Now, what we've been doing in the sermon series is really simple. We've been looking at longer passages in Scripture where God shows himself to us, where he sort of opens a little window from heaven and we can see him. So we're looking at parts of Scripture where God introduces himself, introducing just a small image of who he is to people. And I love it when God does that because the earth shakes in his presence in a way that leaves us changed forever. Because when you start to see how big God is, all the things that you worry about, all the things that distract you start to feel small. In fact, to preview things, next week is Ascension Sunday, and we'll talk about how Jesus is enthroned and ascended. We'll look at the glory of the Son of God and how that gives us power for what God's called us to do. And next week, we're welcoming some new members of our church who are saying publicly and formally, I am following the ascended Jesus into his glory. I, I can't wait for that. But this week is Mother's Day, and we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of looking at one passage about how God describes himself, we're going to look at a bunch of passages, but they're all in one theme. And let me introduce it this way. Most of the time in the Bible, when God opens up sort of the window and introduces himself and shows people like us what God is like, usually it sounds like metaphors and pictures uh, in terms that sound like, well, it sounds like a loving father, very masculine images. So last week in Psalm 19, God is pictured as this big warrior and he's throwing lightning bolts and he's defeating armies and giants with loud thunder and it's so great that God is big enough and strong enough to defeat injustice. He is big enough to answer anything you'll pray for. He's bigger, stronger, and tougher than anything you worry about. That's a lot of the images in the Bible. The Bible teaches us in a bunch of different ways to call God Father, from the Lord's Prayer to the parable of the prodigal son. God is like a good father. But also, God reveals himself in images that sound well, less like a strong father and more like a, mother, a loving mom. And you'd expect that, right? God is big enough to be more than just half of a parental couple, right? And Scripture, not my opinion, Scripture compares the glory of God's love and care for us. He helps us understand who he is by comparing himself to a loving mom. And I love these passages because sometimes you need a warrior. You need to go, I can go up against this obstacle because my father is bigger than your dad, like that's good, but lots of times you're just sad and you're lonely and you don't need someone to beat up enemies, you need a hug and God is big enough to do both. So today we're just going to flip through the Bible and look at a bunch of different passages where God says, I am like the best, most caring mom you could imagine. And I think, I think when that sinks in, it could, say, it could change your life. So I think a lot of us, we've never thought about this side of God, and we feel vulnerable, and uh, we're good at trusting God's strength and his power to defeat injustice, but sometimes we just need to be cared for and loved. What we need is someone who can pick us up when we've fallen and can explain things when the world feels really harsh. So today, we're going to see how God says he does exactly that. And I love this because it could change you from feeling isolated and overlooked to finding comfort in knowing that we belong to the Lord. So let's just dive in. I'm going to go through a bunch of different verses. You'll find them in your bulletin handout if you want on the screen. We're going to start with Isaiah, or Hosea 11, verse 1, a famous text. 
When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. You may know this from the Christmas story. It's quoted in Matthew. We're talking about God taking a toddler Jesus out of Egypt during the Christmas story. If you remember, Mary and Joseph ran away from King Herod, and God brought them back. In Hosea, the context is how much God cares for people. God's people, Israel, they were slaves in Egypt, and God took them out. God saved them. But look what he says next. Think about how God wants people to picture how God treats people who belong to him. Here's what it says. It was I, verse 3, who taught Ephraim how to walk. It's another tribe like Israel. I taught my baby son, he says, basically. Like Ephraim couldn't walk, and I, I taught him how to walk. So picture it. God is saying, I, I took my people by the arms, I'll keep reading, they did not realize it was I that healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them, Hosea says, this is, this is God. God says, I was like one who lifts a little child up to the cheek, and I met down to feed them. You see what God is like? God isn't always sending like the 10 plagues. God is like someone who picks up a little baby and bends down to feed them. This is an ancient Near Eastern image of mom. A mom who holds babies to the cheek, who reaches down and cares for them. And you need, to know, you need to know God is like this. God shows love to us like a nurturing mom does to her babies. You ever watch a mom teach a kid how to walk? And the kid stumbles and falls and the mom just takes him up by the hand with kindness don't give up. You can do it. Uh, I'll protect you. It's, it's I love you. Like that's, that's what God does to us. And kids are so helpless. They can't feed themselves. And moms are like, here comes a choo-choo train. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And like God does that to us, but we can't provide for ourselves. That when we can't fix ourselves, when we try and walk and we fall, when we try and follow and we fail, when we feel abandoned and hopeless, do you know what God is like? You, you need to know this. Actually, you see the pictures of a Taylor looking at baby Everly with such love, like, amazing. You need to know this. That's how God looks at his kids. God picks you up when you're helpless. God teaches you how to get back up again. God feeds us. Or take Hosea 13. Like a bear robbed of her cubs, I'll attack them and rip them open like a lion. I'll devour them. You know what God says he's like? Again, not my opinion. This is scripture here. God says he's like a mama bear and you're like cubs. Everyone understand that metaphor? It's spring. We get black bears showing up sometime and we tell kids, don't play with the cute bear cubs. Anyone else tell kids that? You might see them in a campground. They might wander down into the playground off that hill. Um, and you may find baby cubs to be playful and cute, and they're small and vulnerable and adorable. Baby cubs may seem powerless and helpless, but they're not. Do you know why baby cubs are so dangerous? They've got a mom, right? Do you know why helpless baby cubs are powerful? Because somewhere behind them usually is a mama bear. And do you know what mama bear does the moment she thinks her cubs are in danger? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because from what I'm told, they very quickly make you regret threatening her kids who look like teddy bears. This is important. Hosea says, do you know what God is like? God is like your mama bear. If you feel alone, attacked, defeated, picked on, you need to know this. God is like your mother bear. And you may feel helpless. You may feel like you're by yourself. But God says, again, not me. At any moment between now and eternity, your enemies should watch out. <laughs> Whatever's against you should regret picking on you like a mother bear attacks whoever's picking on her cubs. You may feel all alone. You may feel vulnerable and not cared for. But God... It's going to change those perceptions with the reality of his love for you, is what the text says. Or take Isaiah 66, 13. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. 
and you'll be comforted over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, by the way, just a tragedy during this time in exile. But this is huge. God comforts us like a mom comforts kids. Let me make a terrible admission. I'm not a mother, which means I am not any good at comforting little kids. I've come a long way. I had to learn the hard way, and uh, this is awkward for me, but when we first started having kids, uh, this would happen. One of them would get upset. Uh, she'd be on the floor crying, and I cared. I really cared. I'd make sure there wasn't a lot of blood. Uh, I'd, if she had a knife or power tool, I'd take it away. I'd, I'd see if there needed to be stitches or a concussion risk. I'd look for broken bones. And uh, I don't want to admit this. If I didn't see any of that, I'd go, fascinating. Kid just wants to cry. I like cracking bad jokes. We all have a right to express ourselves because <laughs> I'm a dad. And uh, I'm just like, okay, I'll move on. And my wife would just look at me like, what are you doing standing there? Do you not hear the baby crying? Why didn't you pick her up? And I'm just, you know, looking with this dumb look on my face going, uh, I, I, I don't think she has a transportation issue at this point. She's just crying. And um, that's what dads do <laughs> sometimes, right? And I've, I've come a long way. I've, I've gotten progress, but you need to know something about God. God isn't like a disconnected dad with that dumb look on his face. God doesn't look at the tears of his people and go fascinating and seem upset, right? God isn't like that. God is like a loving mom who hears crying kids like us, picks up his sons and daughters, dries our tears, and comforts us through hard times, through tragedies like the destruction of Jerusalem. That's what God is like. And you need to know that. Or take this one, Isaiah 49, verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? I, you know, the Bible is just so realistic about stuff. The verse is so, this is interesting to me. The Bible basically asks, you know, is it possible for a mom to forget her kids? And it's Mother's Day, and you all have been reading Hallmark cards, and you're going to answer, no, of course not. A mom would never forget their kid. <laughs> and the Bible is so realistic, it goes, uh, you know, actually, sometimes moms do forget their kids, right? Mother's Day isn't always a good day for folks, but I will not forget. And it points out that celebrating moms is complicated, lots of feelings. It's a day where lots of people lament not having kids, where lots of people lament not having good moms or having moms who have been taken from them. The Bible doesn't gloss over any of that. It just says that God is better with this realistic take. You know, it, it is actually sad. It's possible the world is broken. It's actually possible for a mom to completely forget about her kids and not care about them. Yikes. But then it adds, though she may forget, that's possible. God says, I will not forget you. You see what the text says there? What Isaiah says, that it is more likely that your biological mom will forget that you ever existed than that God will stop caring about you. God is like a mom, but one that will never forget you or let you down. That's what we said in baptism, right? God will never forget us or leave us alone. That's provocative. Or another fascinating image, uh, Isaiah 42, um, four, verse 14. This is a verse of God. God is being patient in context. He, he's waiting on judgment. People are looking for judgment. And everybody's asking, why doesn't God hear me? Why doesn't God do something with my pain? And God says something about himself. I have been quiet for a long time. For a long time, I've kept silent. I've been quiet. I've held myself back. And if you've ever prayed, right, and gone, God, can you fix this now? You recognize the complaint. Sometimes God is silent. Sometimes he's quiet. But look at what he says next. But he says, I am now like a woman in childbirth. I cry out, I gasp, I pant, and I don't read the rest of it, but you get the image, right? I want to focus on this image here. God says, when you're frustrated about pain and waiting, God is like a mother about to give birth. God is waiting and powerful enough to bring something good out of your tragedy. That's what God is like. God is waiting with you, feeling pain with you. 
And you may be in a spot where you go, God, I am in pain and you're silent and I'm waiting and I'm expecting something better than this. And God says to that people that God can take pain and bring hope. Pain can become, I'll say this, God is big enough to bring new life through pain. That is what God says he is like. Or Psalm 131, verse 2. This is a switch. This is not God describing himself. This is the psalmist writing about himself as a baby. <laughs> and he's looking to God like a baby looks to his mom. So a normal person of faith saying things about himself and about God. Here's the metaphor he uses to communicate a complex truth about a comfort in God. The psalmist says, but me, I, have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mom. Like a weaned child, I am content. You get the metaphor, right? The psalmist is saying, I, I do actually have problems. Excuse me, I do actually have complaints. But instead of giving in to the temptation to become manipulative or escape, or lash out, or get angry. I could panic right now. The psalmist says, I am choosing to be calm and content in the presence of God. I am going to trust God when there's a big part of me that wants to be loud and upset. Instead of being not calm and not quiet, here's what I'm going to be like. I'm going to be like a child who's now eating solid food. I'm not breastfeeding anymore. So when I'm snuggling with my mom, it is just for her love. And going, God, I'm not here before you because I am trying to manipulate you or because I need things. I am only here for your love. The psalm says, I am, I am not here because I am desperate. I'm not here because I'm loud or anxious. I just, I just want to be with you, oh God. I want to feel your love and your comfort and your arms around me. That's what the psalmist says to describe himself and God. Or take Jesus. He uses these metaphors too. Luke 14, 34. Back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Who, you who killed the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you are not willing. See what Jesus does here? He's in a tough spot. Jerusalem has rejected him. He's about to be crucified by those folks, the same people he cares about. And he says something about what God is like. Do you know what God is like? God is like a mother chicken watching her babies run away to do dangerous things by themselves, headed toward traffic. And what God's children need is the mothering wings of God to chase them down and force them in the shelter. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't really know that much about chickens. I, I mean, even worse, I, um, I made the Bolton graphic and I sent it to Brittany to print it, and she goes, these are ducks. So that's kind of how much I know about <laughs> chickens. <laughs> but um, my babies kind of look the same sometimes. But uh, what I understand is that when baby chickens need help, they find shelter underneath the wings of their mom. That's what God is like. One more, Luke 15. Here's a story. Imagine a woman has 10 coins and loses one. What does she do? Well, she lights a lamp. She sweeps the house. She searches carefully until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Jesus describes God chasing after people like a mom looking for something valuable in a messy house. Dads might never find it. I won't tell you how many times I can't find the remote that's always underneath the couch. Uh, moms, uh, God is like a woman who turns a whole house upside down looking for valuable things 
And you, repentant sinners, people of faith, you are that valuable thing that God is seeking. We can go on. I just want you to catch a brief glimpse of God's glory, that all of the good things that you imagine in a good mom who loves, who nurtures, provides, who picks you up when you're fallen, you might be privileged enough to be able to think about your mom and go, God is like that. You may not be privileged enough to do that. You may lament that your mom is none of those things. But the fact remains, God is all of that with us. He loves his kids. We're his kids. And I think I could pivot this into a sermon about how moms should act, I guess, but that's not, that's not what this is about. This is a message about God's glory. Here's how big our God is. God is big enough to when you are walking and you fall, when you are ready to give up and you need someone to pick you up or hold your hand, when you're frustrated because all of your best efforts aren't good enough, when you feel alone and abandoned, this is what helps you. You need to know that God cares for you, loves you, and nurtures you. Predators may think that you're tiny and vulnerable, but you've got a mama bear right behind you. You may feel exhausted trying to fix problems yourself. You may be looking for peace or shelter or whatever you need. You need to know God is like this mother hen ready to gather you under her dry, protective wind, wings against the winds of a storm. And folks, the Bible says God is like that. And I'm convinced if you could just catch a glimpse of what God is like, you would find yourself being more stable going forward. And I think you would feel more confident in who you belong to. And you would be able to learn the secret to peaceful contentment, which starts by feeling the loving care that God has for his kids. So Father in heaven, thank you for loving us the way good moms love their kids. When we feel discouraged, defeated, when we don't understand what's in front of us, when we become impatient and lonely, may we feel your loving arms around us. Can we feel your protective wings over us? Father, can you help us to rest securely because the promises we are reminded of in baptism are true. You are faithful to us. Your love is so deep. I pray to be with all of our needs. I pray, you know, I forgot earlier, but I pray for Natalie as she studies for her test. I pray for all the other medical students and for the commissioning service this, this evening. Father, we all need you more than we can imagine, and you are bigger than we think we are, or than we think you are. Can you be with us? Help us to trust you. I ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.